What is up, guys? Welcome back to Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. Thank you so much for watching. And today we are talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft review. Uh, let's get started here and talk about some of my draft day guidelines. And first things first, what was the plan? And for the for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think it was clear. Let's push for one final run with Tom Brady. They were able to land Tom Brady in free agency. And I think in part because Tom Brady had to look at that roster up and down and say, hey, there's an offensive line here, seventh best in the, in the league according to PFF last year. The, there, there are offensive weapons. We have a chance. They have a chance to be really good. And if they can add the right pieces around them in the draft, we can we can actually make a push. And, and you know, we're talking about a team that was seven and nine last year with a quarterback that threw 30 interceptions. So they they couldn't be that far off, right? And let's move on. Did they draft an offensive line within the first four rounds? And in my opinion, there is no such thing as a bad team with a good offensive line. And they did. They they actually took a tackle in the first round uh, with Tristan Wirfs at 14 over excuse me, at 13 overall. They made a trade to move up to 13 overall. Um, and, you know, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are one of those teams that actually accentuates my uh, idea. I mean, you know, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their defense wasn't that good last year. Their quarterback was wildly inconsistent, and they didn't have a run game to speak of. But they had a pretty good offensive line, seventh seventh uh, best in the league, according to PFF, as I said earlier. And, and I think they would probably rank in the top three as far as just interior line, uh, especially. So, I mean, yeah, they, they, they were not a great team last year, but they would have been a whole lot worse if they didn't have a pretty good offensive line like they did. And my, my third guideline is, did they take a strength of the draft, which of course was wide receiver? And they did. In the fifth round, they take Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota, the definition of a guy who fell in the draft because of the depth at the top. Uh, so, so they actually get an absolute steal in the fifth round out with Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota there. Uh, but all right, guys, let's get started and talk about the picks. In the first round, number 13 overall, the Buccaneers trade up to 13. They trade up from 14 to 13 to land Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle out of Iowa. And this is one of those moves where they, they're able to guarantee one of the top four offense alignment in the class. Wirfs was, is an instant starter that can come in and protect a Brady's blind side. This is a guy who whose range really was anywhere from fourth, uh, fourth pick in the draft uh, with the Giants to some somewhere in the top 15 where it could have either been the Bucks or a trade up from the Dolphins or something like that. Um, but but that was his range and he falls right in there and really excellent value for, for the Buccaneers who really just need to guarantee one of the top four linemen in this class. And obviously they do that here with Wurfs, uh, who was the odd man out and the last lineman of the elite linemen in this draft taken. And in the second round pick 45 overall, the Bucks take Antoine Winfield Jr. Safety out of Minnesota. And this is an absolute steal for them at 45. This is a guy who who is going to be a great help in the backfield. Uh, and, you know, you're getting a guy who has awesome bloodline. I mean, a, a legendary player as well was his father. So so you can't beat that as at all. Uh, and to me, Antoine Ville Jr., yes, he's a little bit smaller than maybe the prototypical safety, but that's his only knock. It truly is. There's absolutely nothing else you can talk about this player on the field that you can't love. He, he has the instincts. He has the athleticism. He has the I will kick the teeth out of you type of mentality. He is not afraid to hit you over the middle. And, you know, that, that may not work for a guy who is a little bit undersized. And I understand how that can be maybe a negative for him. I'm never going to look at that as a negative for safety. I want to see a guy who is not afraid to put their body into a tackle. And he absolutely isn't. Uh, Anton, Anton Winfield Jr., an absolute a complete package for them in the second round. And I think a high level starter at that. And in the third round, pick 73 overall, they take Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt, a player who I've seen personally, a player who played right down the road from me uh, in, in Nashville. And, and this is a guy who, you know, I actually like the value a lot in the third round. This is right where I thought Keyshawn Vaughn's range really came. Uh, you know, he he's a guy who can really come in and steal that starting job on a team that just did not have a defined starting run running back. I mean, Ronald Jones was kind of a disappointment after being drafted in the second round a couple years ago. Uh, but Vaughn's a guy who, yes, his numbers aren't going to be pretty. And really a lot of his film probably isn't going to be super pretty either. But, you know, he had no help at Vandy. Uh, and the, he certainly has the upside of being one of the top five uh, running backs in this class when it's all said and done. And he's just an absolute sledgehammer. Uh, and he will do that very well when he when he is asked to. I, I, I will say, I think there were a couple players 
that I liked a little bit more than him that were still on the board. Uh, specifically, I think uh, Zach Moss out of Utah was there uh, to be taken. I think he was the next running back taken after Zach, um, after Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, I probably would have gone that direction because Zach uh, Moss is a little bit of the same type of player, just kind of a sledgehammer type running back that can also break it for, for a big gain. I thought he just had a little bit more upside, but I don't hate this pick at all, and that's a very nitpicky complaint to say the least uh, for, for a team. They're both in this, that same tier of player, and, and Zach Vaughn obviously was the, the more sought-after player for the Bucks, and, and I'm not going to complain at all about that. As far as draft day trades for the Bucks, they really did all their trades in the first round uh, with the 49ers. They, they trade up one spot. They, they were originally the 14th overall pick. They move up to 13 to ensure that they get Tristan Wirfs uh, out of Iowa, and, and they send a fourth-round pick to the Bucks, and they and do in return get a seventh-round pick uh, along with trading up to one spot. I think this is one of those moves that the, the 49ers actually just handled really well. I don't hate the value at all for the Bucks. If you have to spend an extra fourth-round pick to get your guy, go do it. They, they were in a position to do that. I think, and I don't know, this is just my theory on the situation. I think that a team like the Dolphins was probably pushing to move into that spot, to, to land a top tackle, right? The Dolphins obviously had a serious need at the offensive line position. They end up reaching a little bit with Austin Jackson at 18 overall. It would make sense that the 49ers would would have at least have considered a trade uh, with the Dolphins. Uh, and the Dolphins were obviously probably offering a second round pick. They had a, a number of picks in, in this draft. So they easily could have made a move that would have happened. But at the end of the day, the 49ers say, no, let's get the guy that we want to draft here anyway and just get an extra fourth round pick in return instead of making a move too far down the board and, and probably losing the guy that they wanted. Uh, so so I don't hate the move at all for, for the Bucks because they land a guy that I, I think they probably had to make that move to ensure that they wouldn't lose out on the lineman. And, uh, and the 49ers get an extra fourth round pick. So it works out for both, both sides. As far as my favorite move in this draft class, I really my favorite move is that trade up. I think the Bucks understood the value that they were looking at. They understood that spending an extra fourth round pick to ensure one of the top four linemen in this draft, especially in this draft and the situation they were in, where really as far as needs for them went, the the value of the draft fell off fell off a cliff once Wirfs falls off the board. Right? There's nobody there after Wirfs that the Bucks can realistically value the same way. At 14 overall, the Bucks take uh, Javon. Kinlaw, which was great value, it was fine value. Javon Kinlaw was easily a top fifteen pick. Bucks don't need D line. Uh, that, that just would have it would have been a value pick for a team that's not really looking to make value picks at the moment. So it, it just made sense to me. I think it made sense to the Bucks, and, and I, I like that move a lot. Just to understand the value you have, and, and understand that hey, when you got to go get your guy, go get your guy. Uh, and my least favorite move. I want to say this is super nitpicky. I actually really like the Bucks draft. I liked a lot of the things that they did. So, so take this with a huge grain of salt. But uh, it is it is taking Keyshawn Vaughn over maybe a Zach Moss or some of the other players that they took. I thought this pick was actually really uh, in, insightful as far as the type of running team they want to be. There, there were guys like Darrington Evans who who fell a little bit farther into the fourth round. The Titans ended up grabbing him in the fourth round. Uh, he could have been in play here. Or, or at least been in the conversation for a guy who, you know, if they were looking for a scat back type of player, they could have taken a guy like that, right? Uh, instead, they take more of a, a physical sledgehammer type of running back in Keyshawn Vaughn. Again, I thought Zach Moss was maybe a better version of that same type of player, but that's very, very nitpicky. As I said, I think in, in when I was talking about that pick originally, they're in the same tier. They're very close. I don't hate it at all, but I had to pick something, so we'll go with that. The biggest surprise for me was landing Antoine Winfield Jr. in the second round at 45 overall. I thought that was a huge steal for them. I really did. Uh, Antoine Winfield Jr., to me, was a top 35 player. I thought he really had a good chance to go in the first round. Top 40 player at the very least. Uh, and, and to get him at 45, for him to just fall into their laps, I mean, that was awesome value for a guy who really should have been one of the top two uh, safeties taken, in my opinion. But alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts about the Tampa Bay Bucks draft were in the comments below. And check back for more videos soon. Peace out guys.